Hello! Sydney here, in case you didn't know. Um, thought I'd do another vlog style video today, like my 50,000 word vlog. If you haven't seen that, I will link that down below, but this video will be very similar in terms of the style of the video, so hope you enjoy. Got a few things to do today. I'm going to be going to Costco to get a couple of household things, and then I'm going to be doing a little cooking later on, because it is autumn. Well, it's not autumn yet. Because it's September 18th, so we still have a few days technically, but yesterday, let me tell you, I saw some leaves falling outside and it just was like, it made me so excited, oh my god. <laughs> like I literally saw the leaves like twirling to the ground and I was just like, it has begun. So I'm going to be doing a little cooking, a little painting, and of course a little bit of writing. Just had my oatmeal, which is completely done now. The sunflower seeds make the oatmeal taste like peanut butter kind of, which is weird, but okay going with that and also I'm watching Everyday Estee. I told you in the last vlog I like to watch Everyday Estee and this is their Rome vlog. Soon after. One of my favorite bands of all time is Young the Giant. I went to a Young the Giant concert on Saturday night. It was like such an enlightening experience. I already I was like so in love with this band but like after that I'm you guys I just I'm so happy so in the last vlog that I did I showed you guys this my back wall that's got you know all this nautical kind of stuff you'll notice there is now a new addition which is this giant fishing net so after I put the video up my dad saw it and he was like he recognized my nautical obsession and so he sent me a bunch of like nautical related stuff one of them being this huge fishing net and I, th I kind of like the placement of it because it looks like the mermaid is caught in the net, which is, you know, wouldn't be cool in real life, obviously, if mermaids are real, which, like, I like to believe that they are, you know. But another thing that he got me was this pillow. Well, he actually got me a few. There was four pillows in a set, or pillowcases, and I just put it on one of my old pillows. I just thought I'd maybe quickly show you my nautical collection because I do have a lot of nautical types of stuff. A giant poster of an iceberg, and at the bottom it says Hidden Depths. I have this ship that my mom's friend was moving, and she... She knew I liked ships, so she gave this to me. Then I have this lighthouse, which my dad, one of the things that my dad sent me. They have these little rock pebble things, and each one has a different nautical thing on it. So that one has a dolphin. This one's a crab. Turtle. Starfish have a seahorse. A mermaid. Inside the mermaid statue my dad also sent me, which is like crazy. So this is, he sent me this, and I put the little mermaid bead in there. This mermaid bookmark which has a little bead hanging out under it. This little kind of jewelry box, but you can see it's, you know, it's not too big. A block of wood that says, I'm mermaid lives here. And then on top of that, I have a little ship that I got. We went on a cruise last March and one of the stops was in St. Thomas. So you can see St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. It's just a little ship. And then I have these rocks, which I've had for, how long has it been? Like 12 years, maybe? So I used to live in Okinawa, Japan, and this is from, all these rocks in here are from one of the beaches there. Each one of them is so unique and like really colorful. You can see that. I just hope that there's no like bad legends or you get bad luck from, you know, taking the rocks from there. Because I know in Hawaii, Pele is the, she's a Hawaiian goddess. I think she's a goddess of volcanoes, but she's just like, if you take any rocks or seashells or anything like that from Hawaii, you will see her wrath. That's the legend. And I was not about to test Pele. I went to Portland and Seattle in July, for, kind of rather impulsively, for a week and a half. And I got this lighthouse there. You can see the word Seattle on the side. And I just think it's funny because I had this lighthouse and then my dad sent me the other one. And they are exactly the same, just painted different colors. This is Halia. And she is a cast iron mermaid fashion, so she's actually really heavy. If you don't know by now, I love mermaids. I think that's everything for now. For now. So, I said I was going to be cooking, and this is what I'm going to be cooking. It is copycat Panera squash soup recipe. If you want to do it too, you, I'll leave the link in the description box below, but I'm just really feeling fall, and I had this like a week or two ago, and it was so good. It's kind of a sweet soup. almost. It almost kind of reminded me of like porridge or, you know, something like that where it's very thick but also kind of sweet um, so and this recipe is supposed to be like a healthier version like it doesn't quite have as much fat or sugar in it so um, it's slightly different but you can just read through the article and like see how different it is because she explains that because apparently the one at Panera Bread is like not all that healthy these are my ingredients got curry powder you know cinnamon and nutmeg salt carrots cream cheese brown sugar olive oil vegetable broth this is a butternut squash dude 
like oh my gosh me and my mom went to the farmer's market and we love this farmer's market we've been going for the past couple of weekends carrots which we also got from the farmer's market it asked for apple cider but we can only find the one that you have to make yourself um onion pumpkin puree which this is way more than i need butter i don't know if i mentioned that this is like that kind of fake butter but it's good it's good anyway does anybody know how to open this thing i don't even know how old this container is this thing i've seen this thing for at least half my life and i'm 22 so wow i don't how do you open it i think i figured it out we have to like lift up this circle part somehow but my nails i don't want to break it ah oh my gosh Come on! Okay. Oh! Aces! Alright. <laughs> we got it! I'm going to add this little thing which my aunt stole from a restaurant. By the way, this curry powder smells amazing. It says I need half a teaspoon of curry powder. Which I will put in here. Then it asks for a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Or not nutmeg, cinnamon, because I can't read. Okay, that's definitely more than a quarter teaspoon, but I like cinnamon, so we're going to And sometimes these recipes don't ask for enough spices, you know, so that ends up kind of bland. Then it asks for a dash of nutmeg. I should probably just do this over the pot that it's going to go. Heck, why not? Let's put a little bit more. I've got my apple cider right here, and it smells really good. It says to put a tablespoon of olive oil in the pan. That's about a tablespoon. I'm going to chop up my vegetables. This is what I'm listening to right now, Young the Giant. My eyes are burning! So I've got all the squash, the carrots, the apple cider, the broth, and this, like the onions and spices in here. And it says to bring it to a boil for 10 to 15 minutes. So that's what I'm about to do now. Butternut squash is really hard to chop. And then it's really slippery too. So it's basically a dangerous combination. I still have all of my fingers. So that's good. And voila, the master finished thing. So I'm going to take a little spoonful of it now. Mm. It's good. Mostly tastes like carrots though. I think I probably put too many carrots. It does say add salt to taste and I haven't added any yet. So this definitely needs some salt. Just sprinkle a little bit on top. I was probably like half a teaspoon or something. Mix that in a little bit. Oh my gosh. I found the spoon! What the heck, dude? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not going to eat this now because I actually just ate some leftovers that my mom made last night and this is really messy. I'm just gonna put this in the thing. All right, so now that I have done that, I'm gonna figure out what to do next. I think I might paint and then talk about writing. Dude, look at this mess. This is my painting set up here. This is what I'm working on now. This is what it's supposed to look like. And instead of the little brown bird in the middle, I'm going to do a blue bird like this. And I should say, I'm not like hugely talented. Um, I'm really just doing this for fun because I really wanted another creative outlet. I love writing but I didn't want to devote all of my creative energy to writing. I just wanted to like diversify you know my creative outlets. I, mean, I think I mentioned in the video before you know like millionaires and billionaires they have multiple streams of income so this is me trying to have multiple streams of creativity. I really should probably change this water. This water has been sitting here for two days so yeah, I'm gonna go change this real quick. Oh, don't mind me. I looked at a picture here of the first thing, the first watercolor painting I did, and that was based off of this picture that I took when I was in Hawaii a few years ago visiting my dad when he lived there. I didn't put as many trees because I didn't want to have to take all that time to draw all those trees. I'm like, I get the point, there are trees here. So my word count is currently about 78,000, and the past week or so, mainly that's come from adding words from a previous draft and I added like 10,000 words but all the scenes that I added were with my main character's love interest and it was just really strange because I'm like okay I just added 10,000 words it's like three or four chapters in a row where it's focused on like her and him bonding I guess and I'm just like okay is it possible to have too many scenes with a love interest it just seemed like it was taking up too much of the story 
and for like 10,000 words I'm like okay this is getting ridiculous so I actually went through and I was able to cut like one or two thousand words from that I know that in revisions I'm gonna have to go and cut a bunch more and maybe even rearrange a couple of the chapters so it's not just you know straight love interest love interest love interest love interest they're talking about things that are relevant to the plot she it's my character is learning things from him um so like plot progression is happening but i'm trying not to worry about this too much right now because i am still in the first draft or i guess at this point it's like the second draft really it ought to be the millionth draft because i can't even tell you how many times i reworked this story you're probably wondering what i'm doing right now i'm just rehydrating the paints so i have to take my brush and kind of just like basically i'm mixing it you know I have to rehydrate the paint I like saying rehydrate the paint as if I really know what I'm doing here. When I first started working on this painting, I worked on it for about an hour before I had to get ready to go to my concert. Which like, dude, I'm still thinking about this concert. I really need you guys to check out Young the Giant. I'll even make my outro song a Young the Giant song because they're just so fantastic. They're alternative rock music, so it's really kind of like mellow, but you know, there's like guitars and drums and obviously, and um kind of ethereal some of the songs. I would compare them to, well, I don't know if I would, they're similar to these bands particularly, but there are other bands that I like that are on the same genre. Glass Animals, maybe Daughter, Paramore. But the lead singer, he's always had one of my favorite voices, but after seeing him perform live, I'm like, oh my gosh. And did I tell you about the dancing? Let me tell you, he was getting down. I didn't get too much footage at the concert, but let me just insert a bit of footage here of what I did get. <laughs> video was just them walking that was them like when the concert first started walking onto the stage and then they started with their song America which is off their most their third album Home of the Strange which is what this tour was focused on but they also did songs from their previous album but all of the members of the band there's five of them all of them are I think first generation Americans so their parents were immigrants and so that's kind of what that first song America is talking about the first lines of the song is and so I've arrived with gold in my eyes are you paying attention and then there's a line later on in the song that goes, um, always talking about one day in America. You know, it's just talking about the opportunities that they're, that, you know, immigrants get when they come to America, which is so interesting given with all that's going on in the news now. And also in the concert, they talked about what a lot of their songs are about. But of course, it's the type of music that the lyrics are, they're there, they have, you can kind of sense the meaning from them, but they're also like free to interpretation, which is what I love about alternative music. It makes it really easy for me to pick songs for my story playlist from that because I can make the songs, you know, mean what I want them to mean. I, like I've literally only done two strokes this entire time that I've been talking. I just know that I'm going to mess it up if I'm half paying attention, you know? Are you paying attention? That's how the song goes. You should, you should listen to it. Oh my gosh, I cannot get over how much I love this band now. Like, I love it. It was already up here, but now it's like, it's like sky high, dude. Today is September 18th, and it's a little bit past the halfway point of the month. And as you know, if you've been watching my videos, I am trying to finish writing a book this month. So as I said, I am 78,000 words in, and I'm expecting this book to go close to 100. I have a an idea in my mind of how long I think the scenes are gonna be and so sometimes those scenes come out way longer than I thought or the scene will come out way shorter than I thought because I realized that I can tell it in fewer words you know and it's one of those things where like I'm an overwriter so the scenes tend to be longer than I expect anyway um, but I do really really appreciate a really good short scene like some of some of my favorite scenes that I've written are the ones where I get the point across really quickly. I do feel like I can finish this book. I feel like it'll probably be a very last minute thing. Like I will probably be sitting down on September 30th. I'll trap myself somewhere and I will not leave 
to go anywhere until I finish the words. Yeah, I think I can hit it. I actually think I might do a 24 hour write a thon kind of vlog um, where I will film. I won't film for 24 hours straight, but I'll set a time. Okay, I'm gonna start here and then throughout the next day I have to, I'll just be dedicating my 24 hours to writing. I don't know if that'll include sleep or not. I'm at the point in my story where I'm very close to the end of part two because I have a villain, right? I, but the entire time they're trying to figure out who's the one that's causing all this mayhem. And so my character is going to figure it out right at the end of part two. Part three will start with her going after the villain and confronting them and fighting them basically, you know? And so that's going to be really interesting because she is not a fighter per se, she's a runner. Like there's a theme in the book of running and she's always, she spent her entire life running from something that she doesn't really even know. And so she's finally decided that she's going to stop running. And that's a huge character moment for her. You know, my character is learning a whole lot of new things about herself right now and it's kind of just made her feel emotionally numb because she's learning so many huge like foundational things about her life um, and about the people in it that she of course if you learn something like that you're just kind of like I mean you're probably like obviously shocked you're maybe upset you're like really happy all of your emotions are conflicting and all of your emotions are really really strong and so she's at that point where she's feeling all these things that she doesn't really know what to feel and so she just ends up feeling nothing at all for a while but at some point obviously that's all going to come back and hit her really hard i've been doing a lot of talking here and not a whole lot of painting come on over here Ugh. if you look too closely at it the details you know they show themselves as being very terrible but um yeah so and this look this is like obviously these are like tree branches like crowding each other and this shape of these tree branches here reminds me of Samurai Jack, that evil villain, that hat that he wears, that thing he wears on his head. It kind of has this weird shape to it. Eventually it's going to look something like this, but I need a lot more tree branches, I think. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I don't feel like painting right now anymore. <laughs> so, the question is, what do I do instead? 48 hours later. Hello again. So, my last, the last part of this vlog was on Monday. It is now Wednesday. I didn't write on Monday, I didn't vlog yesterday, and so here we are. I wrote about 3,900 words last night. I'm currently eating breakfast, it's cereal, um, it's called pumpkin flax granola or whatever, and it's so good. I love this cereal so much. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. City Manager. And I have to say that the way that you're rocking those slacks is quite impressive as well. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Can we hurry this up, please? I'm currently watching Parks and Recreation. I've watched it before a couple years ago, but now I felt like, like re-watching it, so now I'm doing a rewatch, and it's amazing the amount of things that I forgot. I definitely have to show you my updated nautical collection, because I showed you a few things early in the video, but then a few more things came in the mail yesterday. This is one of the new additions that came in the mail. Sundial compass. You can lift this up and then, ah, uh, and now you can actually see the compass. Spyglass. And, ah, uh, it's like, ah. Uh, Captain's log kind of journal. <laughs> So it's got like these, um, like a helm, keychain charm thingy, and then also an anchor charm. You open it up, and it's kind of bound tied right now, but you open it up and then there's like paper inside and stuff. The last thing that came in the mail was this on my wall. Mermaid kisses and starfish wishes. But I realized I also kind of had a couple other items that I never mentioned. One of them is this that I, I went to Boston with my mom, and it's basically a 50 year calendar. You set the months of the year and then it tells you what day of the week a day falls on. And honestly, it's kind of a waste of money. It looks cool at least. <laughs> um, and then another thing that I have is this telescope, which I got for Christmas a couple years ago. There are a lot of trees outside and I can see like the leaves on the trees. I can even see like some of the holes on the leaves. Like, I wonder if you can see it through here. Not the best, but you know, those are all tree leaves and stuff. Alright, so if you hear any noise in the background, that is just the dishwasher going. This is the possibly finished product. I say possibly because I might try to like touch it up with the details a bit later, but 
I like it. It's a bit sloppy in some places, but you know, such is the way of me. I'm currently at 82,304 words. I've got my little my index cards here. This is, can you see the, th the width there? This is all of part two. This is what I've written. This is what's left to write. I'm gonna get to writing now. So, I just got a knock on the door and the mailman came and he brought another nautical gift. <laughs> it's a mermaid clock. I've always wanted like a wall clock. Well, it was also in the package. Bubble wrap! Ooh, that's loud. Oh my god, I think I just like... My eardrum just made a sound. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're coming back to full force here. Okay. I'm gonna hang this up now before I deafen myself. I should probably put some batteries in it first, huh? Mm -hmm. I hear ticking. We are a go. Watch the wheel, the hand of time, go round and round and round. One of the benefits of being tall. Okay. I think that's good. I'm currently eating again. I'm eating another meal because for some reason, when I eat the soup, I get really hungry like an hour later. Like my stomach starts cramping because I get so hungry. And it's really weird because I'm like, I thought this soup would be more filling, but it's not. I'm eating a veggie burger without the bun because it's actually really good by itself. So I put like pesto on it and feta cheese, ketchup, and like a spicy pepper sauce that my grandma makes. And so I'm gonna eat that and then I'm going to resume writing. But currently as I eat, can you guess what I'm watching? You guessed it, Parks and Rec! Ah! 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 Five hours later. It is 11.17 p.m. and I am just here to wrap up the vlog for today. I hit 83,341 words. My goal was to hit 83,340 words, so I wrote one more word than that and I stopped in the middle of a sentence because I didn't know how it was going to end. That ended up with me writing, oh gosh, almost 1100 words for the day. I've got a week and a half left to write this book. I think I can do it. So I'm, I'm wondering, I might even be able to do it a few days early, but you know, we'll see. We shall see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Toodaloo! And the storm it was driving, washing away All the trees on the island Rain water, rain water In the island was a silence But he washed it